hi welcome back to our channel way out here today is gonna be a plant video so I have lots of plants these I don't know if you can see behind me this shelf is taller than me so there's some there and I even have one up there so I'm gonna take you through some of my plant stuff that I do on Sundays and I don't water every plant every single Sunday it depends on what they need but Sunday is the day I take the time to do it and to go through and check everything and I still lose plants here and there you know it happens <laughs> so but I try to go through at least every Sunday and check them see if they need water see if they need fertilizer which usually I just fertilize when I water um, I use the liquid dirt but I'll show everything of that but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to see some of the plants I have some of the ones that I love some of the unique ones um, which ones I consider putting in my skull pots that I make and which ones go in like more normal type pots like these so um, and some of these plants I don't even know what they are I just find them at the grocery store and a lot of times you know we live way out here again um, they're labeled there's a price sticker on them and it says house plant and it's like oh <laughs> thanks thanks for the information so that's about all you get sometimes, so you have to figure out what some of these are. And I actually have a really cool one that was labeled houseplant that I did figure out what it is. And I'm really happy that I picked it up like three years ago for, I want to say like $4.99, so $5. And it ended up being one of my favorite plants. So that's, let's look at that one right now. Okay, so this is it. This is one of my favorites. This is a big plant. You can see this leaf, the size of this leaf compared to my hand. So this is big and it is beautiful and I keep it down here by my arrow garden. I just started an herb garden in it. Uh, that was a present for me for my birthday from the kids. So um, this plant is from all the research I've done a philodendron revolutions which means it's not in the philodendron family anymore. I think it's a different one. If I can find the name I'll put it up on the screen. But this was, when I bought it, it had three leaves and they were teeny. They were all maybe this size. And they looked like a Hartley philodendron. Like they weren't, they didn't have as much uniqueness and split to the leaves. They were, I don't even think I have one. They were even less split than this. They just looked like, like I said, like a standard Hartley philodendron. And this one was labeled houseplant. And I picked it up and kept it alive and this is what we've got now we've got this huge plant with all these leaves that are just massive so and the thing about this guy is it does attract thrips but they don't really do a lot to it because it's so big I just make sure I hit it with some neem oil every Sunday which I'm gonna do today and then water it when it gets completely dry and it's thrived for me like here's another leaf so yeah this thing's beautiful it's one of my favorites and um next to it is this um it's this denanthe uh, i forgot it starts with an l um another good one uh this one i had some trouble i put it in bright light and it singed some of my leaves as they were coming in so i removed it put it over here where it's not in such bright light see so that was my mistake but the leaves that are coming in now see are really nice and pretty because you have to find the right light for them and plants are like everything else that I say you know like like our ducks like our bees like everything you have to figure out what works for you and you have to figure out what plants work for your environment some plants do some plants don't and I suggest moving them around some people don't like to do that but I move my plants around a lot give them new homes and yeah, that's pretty much two of my favorites, but I'll take you around, show you a few, and we're actually going to pot. I got a new plant. I ordered this from Plantarina, and I will link this down below. This is a Hoya Curtsii, I think is how you say it, and it's vining, and it's beautiful, and I love Hoyas. Hoyas do really well upstairs, so I'm going to pot this guy in this. And we are going to take that and put it in a permanent spot. So um, if you guys remember, I made a video on how to make these things. This is just a spray painted version. But yeah, I'm going to pot this in this red skull pot today. And the other thing I'm going to do is work on getting these packed up for my sister. So these are propagations I made for her 
or just plants that she has wanted that I was able to pick up. Um, so this here is the one I made in the video. Sorry, my, it's the core for my light. It's the one I made in my video. It's just a moonlight snake plant and I'm gonna send the skull to her. I did not end up finishing the repainting. She said she liked it as is, so we're gonna send it. And I've got this, It was this is a propagation from my Monstera adansonii and a pot that she really liked that she saw. Um, I have a copper one in this version that she loved and she wanted this teal one, so I'm gonna send this to her. And this is some succulents that have and snake plants that have propagated we have some more moonlight snakes back here and then right here this one is a agave it's a blue agave so i have some cylindrical snake plants here and then just a couple of standard laurentis so that's what i'm doing today stick around if you enjoy this kind of thing you want to see my plants want to see what i do and and uh, we'll, we'll go have some fun. All right, so this is a spot where I keep two of my skull pots and I have, we have some sheds over here and we've got our, our, my big skeleton and he like, he's wearing a necklace, skeleton necklace. I picked this up, I think at the dollar store, but it turns on and lights up and um, storing it, the skeleton broke the, broke his head where it attaches to his spine. So I need to fix that, which I will. Um, but in the meantime, I have these two plants here. This is a pothos. It's just a, I think it was supposed to be a golden pothos, but it's reverted back to mostly jade. It's got a little variegation right there, but reverted back. I don't really care. I like it either way. It's right by a window, but it should get enough light to get some variegation, but if it goes away, like it's okay. I think it, I think they're still great plants and they're really super easy. So I don't really mind that the variegation goes away. Some people might, I don't mind. And then this is actually, I love this plant. I think this was labeled, it's a skindapsis, but I found it on Poshmark actually. And I will link her Poshmark account below if I can. This is, um, just two cuttings of a, I think she called it a silver satin, but I have another one called silver satin I bought from Plantarina that does not look like this. So I'm not exactly sure what version of Skindapsis this is, but it's, it's really nice. And I just watered these yesterday cause I was over here and I was thinking about it. So these two have already been watered and that's our little setup in the corner of our dining room, just on an old antique trunk that my husband's mom gave us. So yeah, I have that. Then we've got this guy here, which is a Creeping Charlie, non-variegated. So that one will need to get watered. And then right behind, we've got our Sharps container, which I'm trying to hide behind plants because it is ugly. Um, this is the, where, uh, sorry. This is where we put the needles that we use after we inject the cat. We put them in the Sharps container. Um, I've got a couple of prayer plants back here. Um, this one I got from my mom. She gave me this. Um, it was a new one that grew out of hers. And then I've got this wandering dude, wandering Jew. It is huge and it's so big. It's like hiding my skeleton. And then I have this whole plant shelf here. This is a Christmas and Easter cactus. Um, over here is a snake cylindrica. And this is a rubber plant. Down here is another prayer plant that does well. And this is interesting. This is a poinsettia that I am trying to get to live until Christmas again. I had another one. I had a white one and it is not okay. I had to get rid of that one, but this one is doing fine. It's got new leaves even. It's got new growth, um, keeping it in a darker spot. And then once the, you know, it really starts to get into the holiday season, I'm going to put it up on the table. So we'll see what happens and hopefully Hopefully I can keep that one alive. All right, so when I'm setting up, the first thing I do, since it's still early in the morning, get my coffee, I have that, and I disinfect a knife and my scissors. In case I need to cut anything off the plants, I just like to disinfect them first. I don't know if you have to, I've read that you should. So anyway, I don't wanna introduce anything if I don't have to, and yeah, so I just disinfect these and leave them here to use. And then I have my watering can. It's got water in it. 
and I just eyeball it and make a big mess and clean up when I'm done. But eyeball it, try to get two tablespoons of, this is liquid dirt, in a giant jug of water. So I just keep reusing this jug. Every time I make more liquid dirt, I just put it in this jug and I label it plant food so that hopefully nobody will drink out of this. So I'm gonna go start watering some of my plants and show you guys some of what I have. inevitable you're gonna make a mess so I just clean up when I'm done I don't even bother and most of the time the kids know just to stay out of the water so to the plant shell. So this is how I do it. it. May not be the safest, so don't do this if don't put plants up high if you're not willing to get up there and water them. Um, other than the ones that I have in my room, but these are the ones that I'm going to show today. All of these, um, the ones on the plant shelf that I just did, those actually only get watered every two weeks. I don't need to water them every week. I let them completely dry out, all of them. They're all plants that can make it for two weeks without watering, even though there's bright light right across from where they're at. They tend to do really well up there, and that's why I chose those ones for up there. So um, if you don't want to water them as often, put your plants that don't need as much water up on your plant shelves and then you don't have to do it as often. So that's my little, my little tip for your plant if you're a planty person and you like to put them everywhere. So. All right, so my husband's mowing. I just put a little bit of dirt in this pot. Where is it? Right there. Not a lot, if I don't need it all. I will leave it on this deck and sweep it off. And I'm gonna plant this Hoya in this skull pot. These used to give me a lot of trouble to repot because I was always so worried about breaking off the leaves. But if you do break one off, I'll show you what I do. You can actually save it and propagate it and either give it to somebody else or put it in your back in your original plant. So see this has a lot of dirt and there's not a lot of roots so this really doesn't need repotted but um, I love these skull pots so I am going to repot it and I try to save as much of the dirt as I can. I want it this way. Alright so press it in and it pretty much filled in everything except for a few spots. So, 
and I kind of manipulate this packed dirt that it comes in. Sorry, my husband's mowing. He wants to mow before the bees come out because he doesn't want to crush any of our honeybees. So he does that early before the bees come out. And it's still cool. And then I even push down a little bit around the edges here so that your water has a place to go. Make sure I have enough dirt here. Yeah, that's looking good. And the thing about Hoyas is they need a lot of light. So they need light on top of them. So you get this like bushy effect. Make sure I'm still in the frame here. So that you get this bushy effect. If you don't get light on the top of them, they start to thin out up here. But this one's obviously had a lot of light on it. Again, this was, I bought this from Plant Arena and I love that place, like that's my favorite place to buy plants because they come in such good condition and I mean she takes really good care of them and she does winter packaging and I've gotten several like in the coldest months of the year and they've all made it and survived and I still have them so um, so yeah that's that guy and I'm going to go find a permanent spot for him. I'm not going to water this, the soil is still a little bit damp and Hoyas are kind of like succulents or they just don't need that much water and I don't want to I do not want to overwater it because I really like this guy so we're gonna go find a spot for him okay so this is a plant shelf my husband made me it is in our bathroom so this is really good light in here I have a lot of plants in here and I have and I love them all so um, I got some down here too um, this one here in this red coffee pot is actually a coffee tree that my sister found in Memphis and shipped to me and it successfully shipped and it is alive and I love that thing. So she sent me another one, um, not sent, I picked it up when we were in Memphis, this guy here. This is actually a lemon tree that she grew from seed. I'm going to do like a whole, I think a whole video on this plant because I love this guy, he has his own name, like you know it's serious when you name a plant. So. Um, this lemon tree looks way different than all the other ones she grew. So hers are all really tall and leggy and skinny. And this one seems to be very, very bushy. It doesn't have like a prominent, dominant trunk, which is interesting, but I still love it. And even if it never produces lemons, I'm going to keep this forever because she made it for me. So anyway, back to here, we're going to put the skull... Hoya plant right there. I may have to move this stuff around and see if I can get it in a spot to get it more light on top. Um, I don't know if it'll work up there, but I'm going to try it for a week and see what happens. Okay, so that's what we're working with up there. I really like the look of that plant that just turned out great and it looks good in that pot. So I am actually going to water these. I might try to set up the camera and do like a fast thing. Um, I did water everything down here yesterday, so I don't have to do it today, but we'll see if I can set it up and like fast forward because I stand on the bathtub and like I still take all the plants down too. So, so this will be a pretty good view of what I'm working with. It might be a little dark, but, um, obviously there's lots of light in here either way. It's just shadowed, but should be able to see it. So I'm going to get to watering my plants.
and this is the last bit of information uh, for this um, video anyway for the plant tour and plant care video I have that's only like half my plants so I'll do a second part if I did everything that I do this video would be hours long because it takes me a couple hours to go through everything every Sunday but anyway this is a piece of that Hoya that I was talking about earlier that I put in the red plant that had broken off during transit and it was in the bottom of the box that Plantarina had sent I just ripped off the couple of bottom leaves at the node which is where you can see the roots coming in right there so that it would form new roots and as soon as these roots get a little bit longer I'm just gonna take this guy and plant it in that pot that I already have in that red skull pot and this is just gonna add one more vine coming out of that guy so if you have something like that if you break one of these off when you're repotting this is an easy fast quick way to propagate it and to get it back in there so thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed my plant care video Bye.